I met a girl in a community college class when I was 20. We came from very different backgrounds. I was middle class, trying to find a cheaper way to go to college. She was living in almost poverty, going to school because she was forced to by her parents who were threatening to kick her out. She dropped out about a year into her schooling while I continued and finished. During her first year, we formed a relationship and she moved into my apartment more or less. Her relationship with her parents is pretty much non-existent and she has little to no outside friends besides one or two women she knew from high school who are deadbeats, in my opinion. I make around 80K a year, so we live relatively comfortably, but there's still some strain on finances. I can't say exactly when I started losing feelings, but the fact that she refuses to work, will not cook and wants to eat out every day, does not want to go to school, and continuously wants to buy and spend money on clothes and other stuff, just slowly started grading me more and more. I work in a female-dominated workplace, and seeing, having conversations, and interacting with coworkers who have so much going for them, have fun hobbies and aspirations, makes it all the more worse when your girlfriend is chronically online and spends seven hours a day scrolling through Instagram or TikTok reels and thinks having intimacy is all she needs to do on her end. Our relationship isn't bad. We have fights every now and then, like an average couple, have an active intimacy life, but that's pretty much it. From her perspective, if I broke up with her, it would be out of nowhere, but I'm pretty much done and know I could move on quickly and have nothing to be regretful about, as shitty as it sounds. The problem comes in her having no job, no finances, almost no friends, and no family support unit. I'm not a monster. I don't want to make someone virtually homeless, but I don't want to be stuck with someone who has nothing going for them either. I don't know what to do. Now for a few important comments. Yeah, if she was a toxic or just bad partner, I wouldn't have too much trouble ending it. But she's fairly nice, just very lazy. I've tried to talk her into trying different hobbies or interests to get her active, but she always turns them down each time. When asked how long this had been going on, I said she wasn't as bad when we were still in school. She at least helped cook and had some aspirations to be a nurse. But I guess when she started getting comfortable, her habits built on and on until it got to this point. This wouldn't have been a four-year relationship if this was how it started. She only leaves the apartment when I take her to get food. She either sleeps or is on her phone. When asked if she was miserable with her life, I said she's not really miserable. She always sends me 30 plus memes at work on IG and is honestly a pretty funny person. She has her mood swings on some days, but that's how she usually is. I've tried talking to her about this more than once, but she either thinks I'm not being serious or tries to change the subject. The one time I was serious, she said she would try looking at courses again, but it eventually fell through and I stopped trying. She just doesn't really care. Now for the next day update. For starters, I want to thank everyone for all the advice I was given on the last thread, as it helped me formulate how I would go about doing this. When I made that post, I was having an extremely bad day and didn't expect it to blow up like it did, so I don't think I was able to give her a fair defense. Also, I got dozens of messages, ranging from asking me to hand out her contact info so they could take her in as a live-in intimacy girlfriend, to helpful advice telling me to start hiding anything valuable. When I had said that she had come from poverty, her father is a laborer, while her mother also lives a similar lifestyle to how she lives now. Their home is maybe 1,100 square feet and in a terrible place in town. And given her father's past ultimatum, I don't think he will take her back as she hasn't been back home in years. Yes, I have talked to her about this since January maybe three times either by gently telling her it would be nice if she went out more to find a hobby at the very least, to flat out saying she was wasting away on her phone and that she needs to get a job or go back to school. Each time she either changed the subject, makes it a joke, or follows through for a couple of days before going back to her usual self. She is a kind partner who asks me about my day, always tries to make me laugh or lighten the mood when I get annoyed, and generally shows a lot of affection, which makes me feel terrible when none of that works anymore 
and I just see her as another person. Now for the confrontation. Last night, when we were both getting ready for bed, I didn't take my clothes off and instead just stood there telling her we needed to talk. At first, she was just smiling and jumping up and down on the bed with her knees, thinking I wasn't as serious as I was, but eventually she was able to read the mood. I told her something wasn't feeling right anymore, that I've tried to make this work and be patient with her for the past few years, but I didn't know how much more time I was willing to spend waiting for her to get a job, go back to school, or just get a hobby, if anything. I told her that it annoyed and grated me that she just didn't seem to care about herself and that I hated she had no goals or aspirations. This was probably the first time in a long time she was as attentive as she's ever been during this conversation and agreed to whatever I was saying, even also giving suggestions on where she can apply, what courses were starting to interest her, and even said I could look over her as she submitted applications online to make sure she wasn't lying. In her head, it seemed like I was still willing to make this work, and a part of me believed this would finally be the moment that she would change. So it made the next part even harder for me and for her. At first, I told her I didn't love her the same way, which slowly but eventually led to me saying I didn't feel anything at all about this relationship and was jaded. I was tired and wanted a fresh start with someone who was more goal-oriented and wanted something more out of life. When she realized what I was getting at, she started to cry and asked why I didn't mention this sooner. I said, I've always asked her to cook, to go out with me to try something out, or to just go back to school, even when I offered to pay for her classes. Anything. She said she understands that part, but was upset why I didn't say it was leading to me losing interest in her because, from her perspective, it seemed as if I still loved her all the same. She started apologizing, saying she wasn't in the right mental state and saying nothing was motivating her, and she genuinely had no interest in any hobbies. The only thing she liked was spending time with me, which is all she looked forward to in the day when I came home. None of this was really affecting my emotions besides making me feel uncomfortable. So I tried to continue by saying, I think her lifestyle would be better with another person. But she immediately cut me off and became more panicked. She started to apologize again for what she's done and said she would be a better girlfriend, that she would go with me tomorrow to wherever I wanted to go and would look for courses in August that she could start doing. But she did not want to lose me since she had nothing else in life and absolutely hated that I stopped loving her. There were so much tears and snot that I said we would have this conversation again when she calmed down, and we eventually did in an hour or so. She pleaded to give her two months to make a change and give her another chance, and promised and promised that she would change. Again, she listed off all the places she would apply to and said she would be a better partner. I never wanted to make her homeless, so this seemed like a good settlement, even though I still had my doubts. I then reaffirmed that I wanted to see other people, but she seemed much more adamant on this issue than the aspirations issue that she would be able to fix this. She said, just give her a month to try and make the relationship work and asked me again and again on what she could do to make her love her again and that she didn't want me to hate her. She said that this was the worst part of it all in the only person that she had just being done. It seemed as if she was about to break down again. So I said, okay, We'll see how this relationship is in a month. In my mind, if I'm allowing her two months to get back on her feet, then by a month she would already be ready to move on. I also didn't want her to suffer a complete mental breakdown while I was still living her, so giving her a month to let her fix the relationship would give her enough time to accept things. I slept on the couch last night and will probably continue doing so for a while. She came out at about 3 a.m. wanting to talk some more, but I said I was exhausted and we would do it tomorrow. She then slept on the floor beside me for the rest of the night, apologizing again. When I told her to stop, she silently said, okay, and sobbed for a bit under her blanket. But that's everything that's happened so far. This was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but I regret nothing 
and feel much better letting everything out. I don't know how this situation will be in two months, but I was firm that it was the deadline. This post will probably get buried, so I probably won't do another update since I don't think anyone will care about this in a week or a month, but I will definitely private message those of you who have been helping me through this on how it turns out, or those who just want to be updated. But yeah, thanks. Now for the next day update. I feel like this will be an easier place to post since it's my page and I don't have to worry about over spamming with small or inconsequential updates anywhere else as it's only for those wanting to read. I want everyone who has private messaged me to know I read them all, especially those of you who have gone through similar circumstances as me and have shared your stories. I've been doing some self-reflecting and think I know how I wanna go about this that will help with my lack of communication skills. I know I'm not a perfect person, but I still stand by my decisions I made that night 100% through and through. I might post an update sooner in a week or so as the day after our fight am filled with a bit more hope than usual. Don't know how long it will last, but better make use of it. But again, just wanted to post this for everyone sharing your stories with me privately as I can't message you all as it's been helping me make decisions on what to do about this all immensely. Now for a tangential post about baking. Hello, I have a partner who wants to start taking an interest in baking. She's a bit self-conscious and doesn't like asking or looking for outside help. And I'm kind of clueless in the subject, but I wanna be able to find a resource to give some help for her. Are there any YouTube playlists or something similar you would all recommend to get started for someone who has little experience cooking as well? Now for the one week update. Hey all, it's been about a week since my last post and thought I'd give an update. A lot has happened, including the explosion of my first update thread. I have over 50 plus DMs asking me for an update. So instead of copy and pasting replies, I'll do another one. I find it easier to write than to speak in many situations. So this has been a great way to help my decisions and clear my head. Writing everything down has helped tremendously and I will continue to do so until this is all over and I will nuke everything afterwards. After the night confrontation, we didn't really speak all too much at home with it being dry and awkward for a day or two, but I have been told I'm a workaholic by nature. So it was easy for me to stay at the hospital as a distraction but in that time, she did start to cook again. We weren't in the mood to go out to eat together. Eventually though, I sat down with her after she asked for a more thorough conversation on why I felt our relationship was failing. She promised not to cry or get upset, but wanted me to, to be 100% upfront, so she had a better way of understanding, stating she wanted to try everything to fix this. I was really apprehensive about this, and I can't really explain why, but given being together for four years, I wanted to at least make an effort myself out of respect, even though a large part of me was angry for even doing so, as I feel I've never had the same from her. There have been many different camps in my last update, the main ones being kick her out immediately and leave her before it gets worse, try to find a way to fix our relationship or end the relationship altogether but continue living with someone who would probably become absolutely neurotic. If I was going to let her stay for two months, I would absolutely not be dealing with that. I took consideration in all these main advice discussions and read through almost every reply. Even the most assumptive, bizarre, and downright unhinged Redditor takes, more importantly, I took heavy influence of those who have shared with me their past stories which either led to them being stuck in loveless relationships for years or eventually being able to overcome their problems and have an even stronger connection. Thank you again for your private messages. I read through a lot of your lives. Now for our conversation. She said she saw something on TikTok where couples put a phone on a table with a timer and wanted to do something similar for each person to air what made them upset. I said, that was dumb. If we were gonna talk about our problems, it would be better if there was no time limit. She eventually agreed and said, I could go first, asking me first, when was the time that I completely lost my love in her? As I said before, it was never one action, but
but a grating feeling that got worse and worse until it got to this point. And I told her that, so she then asked, when was the time I felt the most angry? I said it would take some time to think for me, and she said that was fine. After a few minutes, something came to mind. I couldn't formulate the right words at first, but it eventually just started to come out. I told her the worst time was when I was first starting at my hospital. To keep it short, the tempo was brutal. It was constant work with little to no downtime as I was constantly learning new things that school would had never taught me. While being expected to be able to handle it as a professional, it was without a doubt the most stressed I've ever been and I feel like other RNs can relate here. That year hardened the way I think now, that hard work does pay off if you have the drive and the passion. I told her I think that was when I started losing feelings the fastest, seeing her at home doing absolutely nothing, coming home to no food made, to her not working a job, to her not learning anything, completely stuck to the internet with nothing to show for it. I said it made me even more upset when I had given suggestions for jobs with pretty easy schedules or to find a new interest in school that would pan out better than last time, only to be rejected at my every attempt. I told her flat out that it disgusted me. She asked me why I didn't make this a bigger issue at the time, that I should have communicated this to her, but I said there's some things that shouldn't have to be said. I shouldn't have to remind her to wash her butt, eat, do something other than mindlessly scrolling on her phone for hours at a day every day. I also told her that after coming home from the hospital during more stressful days, the last thing I wanted was to spend my time begging my girlfriend to do something productive. So I held my tongue and settled as she was still nice and caring. I had no other reasons to end it. And so the resentment grew worse from then on. It was around here that I became more mean to my regret now, but I will still input it as I have everything else. I told her that when she dropped nursing, I was upset since I felt that she was more than capable of doing what I had done. But after spending more time in the relationship and spending more time getting to know her, I knew that with the type of person she was, there was no way she could have ever finished. Which is why I suggested easier and more laid back jobs, less demanding majors for school. Shoot, even if she just cooked or found an interesting hobby at that point, I would have appreciated it. Still, she chose to do nothing for years. It's just the type of person she was and why I felt done for her romantically over time. She asked me if I hated her, and I said I didn't know. I told her she was very loving and kind, but I hated how she handled her life to this point, that I felt no ill will towards her after airing everything out, but I also felt nothing else. I just felt done and ready to move on. Throughout this conversation, we kept eye contact, and there were times it seems like she would break, but like she said, she remained as calm as she could while I said what I had to say. I told her I was done, and she could say her piece now. But she asked if we could continue the conversation later and locked herself in our room for the rest of the day. The next day, we sat down again and finished the conversation. She told me that she thinks she's depressed, saying that she didn't feel sad before that night, just had no motivation of doing anything. I had a couple of messages telling me to ask her to get tested for ADHD. But when I started bringing it up, she was very adamant that is not something she felt comfortable with. I knew she didn't like needles or going to the hospital in general, but her flat out refusing to get tested for disorders when I told her it was not at all like a regular hospital visit surprised me. She asked me if she was able to change in her behaviors. Would I give her another chance? I said I didn't know as I felt nothing right now and didn't know if her doing it would bring any feeling back especially since it took my breaking point to do so. She asked if there was any compromise, and I told her again, if in a month I felt like there was enough reason to stay together, I would, but that there was no guarantee that my feelings would return. But I would match any effort she also put out. She was frustrated by my answer, but I said that's how it would be. She gave me a piece of paper to look at that she was working on last night, that had a list of hobbies and interests she wanted to look into. 
the two major ones being photography and cooking again. She told me that she was looking into these while also showing me her phone, giving proof that she was putting in applications on Indeed and Glassdoor for some entry-level positions that she might get hired in. I told her if she was able to show enough passion or interest in these hobbies that she showed, I would not care about her working, just anything to improve herself. But if she didn't do anything at all, then it would be best to look for a new job to help her if she moves out. I've also been asked in private messages if I have any personal friends to talk to. There's two female coworkers I confide some information in given how many hours we work together at our hospital and who I completely trust, as in my opinion, they are extremely grounded. They both said I would eventually get love bombed and this would all go back to how it once was and that I needed to stand firm with moving on. They've very helpful friends who have even offered to let me stay over for a few nights, giving the reason that I would fall for her manipulation if I continued being anywhere near her in their own words. But it didn't feel right since I'm still technically in a relationship, but I said I would consider it if the situation worsened. But again, I find them grounded, so I always try to take their advice to heart. Despite numerous messages from you all privately or openly telling me that this will be a mistake, I want to make the attempt to give this one last try. Though I feel heavily closed and guarded and still feel indifferent with our current situation. But a lot of you have told me this can eventually change with enough work from both parties. I have also taken the advice of those saying to cut off intimacy, which was my intention from the start anyway by continuing to sleep in the living room. But each day she has been sleeping on the floor right below me, even when I tell her I'd rather be alone with my thoughts, telling me this is something she would not accept. But that's everything so far. Just waiting to see if things can get better now that we're working on this somewhat. Am I the idiot for feeling betrayed by my friends and wife after they ignored my big win? Myself, my wife, and friends from college, including best friend and his wife, have been doing a college football pick'em league for the last 12 years. It's for fun, but I'd say most everyone takes it somewhat seriously. Since we have had the league, different people won, but for six years in a row, one particular guy kept winning. Each year, we have a big tailgate party at a game where the winner of the previous year is honored with a speech and trophy. Last year, we even arranged for a surprise cameo to be played at the tailgate for the guy who won his sixth in a row. I broke his streak last year and won the league, but I was also the person who typically got the trophy and arranged the cameo or some of the other cool things we've done. So yesterday was our big tailgate and it was my chance at being recognized as the person who won the previous year. A few hours in, my wife had a few drinks in and said, I don't even know what we're doing this year for person who won six years in a row. Then I said that actually I had won and her whole face changed. Our friends standing next to her turned white as a ghost. First they laughed, then said, no wait, it was you? I realized that until that moment, it hadn't occurred to them or anyone to do anything. There was no trophy, speech, anything. My best friend quickly gets told by my wife that they forgot to do something and says nothing can't make eye contact. Gets worse for me. After it sets in, I'm in the bathroom an hour later. I walk out and some people start clapping because my wife had awkwardly arranged for the crowd at the party to do something. It's worse because the guy who won six years in a row and had been a recipient of some cool stuff is laughing hysterically that everyone forgot to do anything. I'm just sad. I don't really want to talk to my wife. She gave me a very short apology this morning and offered intimacy to cheer me up. Made it worse. Drove six hours home crying here and there, wondering how a group of people I love and care about would drop the ball. Sent a text out to some saying how shitty it was to be forgotten. Sucks. I'm sure tomorrow I'll be less sad. Now for a few important comments. Commenter one, you're the planner. You're the one that keeps people together and makes sure no one or thing is forgotten. So when you don't do all the work, no one else does. It's really crappy they forgot to celebrate your win. You deserved a hurrah and they let you down. Really sorry. Commenter two, 
They did drop the ball and then handled it really inappropriately. Sincere apologies were needed ASAP and then making it up to you. I'd truly join another league just to take your mind off it and detach a little from that scene. Even if they don't do celebrations, slash you're the planner of the group that still isn't cool. I hate football, but this got me worked up. Commenter three, everyone likes to accept rewards and praise, but not everyone likes to return the favor. OP went out of their way to make sure whoever won had a good time and felt special for six years and got nothing in return when it was his time to shine. And to top it off, his wife is trying to downplay it and act like he's overreacting. Feels bad. Least they could do is apologize. Especially the one who laughed after OP is the one who made his wins special in the first place. Commenter four. Next time your wife is upset, offer her intimacy to cheer her up. Commenter five. This isn't stupid at all. You're validated in feeling how you do, and it's shitty as frick that your friends and wife didn't recognize how important this was to you. I totally get it. It isn't about fantasy football. It's the pretense of the entire situation. Honestly, if it were me, I would tell my friends via phone call or face-to-face, -face, not text, and tell them how it made you feel unappreciated as a member of the friend group as well as it hurting how they reacted after realizing you were the winner. Not because it was over a game of fantasy football, but because this is clearly something you all put effort and emphasis into for multiple years, and there's no excuse for just brushing you off. I would also tell your wife how it made you feel with offering intimacy. Intimacy isn't something to be rewarded or withheld, and that set off some alarm bells for me personally. You deserve to be surrounded by people who appreciate you the same way you do for them. This isn't something to accept. It's important that you say something. I know it's uncomfy, but it's worth it. Sending you love. OP replied, thank you much, really. I teared up that anyone felt sympathetic. I'm in my house and feel like I'm on an island by myself. Now for the next day update, update. It's tomorrow, after a night where I slept in the guest bedroom. Late last night, I got an email apology from the girl who turned white when she found out. My wife woke up at six to get ready for work, and I was up helping kids get ready for school. She wanted to talk and asked if I could talk also. I was half awake and didn't have any thoughts put together. The first thing she says is that I need to keep perspective. She said that it's not as if she cheated on me. She forgot something big, but there are much worse things that could have happened. I didn't respond. She asked how long she was going to be punished for this, and I just responded with saying it wasn't all about her. She is visibly frustrated, and I'm too afraid to say something that will ignite her. I feel like she's desperate for me to say anything. I realize she's not comforting me or trying to understand. She wants full resolution before we have to take kids trick-or-treating tonight. That's it for now. She texted good morning, and I haven't responded. Now for a few more comments. Commenter six, when the planner doesn't plan, shoot doesn't get done. I am sorry that your lame butt friends didn't treat you well by remembering to celebrate your win. I'm even more sorry that none of them had the guts to come clean and apologize in front of the group for being such a shitty friend. And finally, to the guy that laughed and who no one shut down when he was, please accept my two finger salute over the internet. Now that I've established that I'm firmly on your side, I ask you, what do you want to have happen now? Think long and hard about what it is that you want. Yes, this whole fantasy football thing is shitty, but what sort of friends are these guys outside of this situation? Would you call them if you needed help moving, and would they come? If you suffered a real tragedy, would any of them be another shoulder to cry on? If you have kids, or were to have kids in the future, would you invite these people to be a part of your child's life? If these people are merely the college fantasy football bros, then maybe you need to consider letting them all go. You've devoted considerable time and effort and maybe money into making these events fun for them. But when the time came for them to return the favor, they didn't care enough to get the job done. I don't blame them for not being more sincere in their apologies on the day this all went down. By your account, they were all caught flat-footed, and it's hard for most of us to admit our mistakes and apologize properly 
when we're still processing what a jerk we've been. Have any of them reached out since? Only you can decide how much these people mean to you and whether you want them in your life going forward. If I were you, I would write a huge screed about everything I'd done for the group over the past years, trying to make this event a yearly spectacular. I wouldn't cuss or throw around insults, but I would make it very clear to everyone that this event is so much fun every year because of my hard work. Then I'd end it with how disappointed I was that none of them saw fit to return the favor when I was the winner. I would absolutely point out that the previous winner laughed and was a complete jerk and that it was shitty of them not to shut that noise down. But I'm petty like that. Maybe you're not that petty. I'd fire this off into the group chat or whatever you guys use to communicate and see what happens. Maybe you'll get a ton of heartfelt apologies and they'll plan an extravaganza in your honor and all will be well. Or maybe you'll get back a bunch of hate and you'll see their true colors. Either way, you'll have your answer as to what sort of friends they really are. Once you've sorted the friend situation, you'll need to sort things with your wife. I have a lot of questions for her, and I imagine you do too. Why didn't she organize something to celebrate your win, for starters? The wife might be something that requires marriage counseling, but only you two can determine that. Now for a few comments. Ope, I don't know. I don't want anything. As of this morning, I'm just wanting to not have this tension with my wife but I'm kind of stuck on feeling let down and she's supposed to be the person that doesn't do that. Then another commenter said, is your wife always as shitty as she seems here? OP replied, no, she's great and a wonderful partner. But one major part of her personality is that she hates any feeling of having done something wrong. It's like she becomes a different person. Another commenter added, so bad intimacy and a weak apology is how she makes up for it. And then another commenter said, and then getting upset at OP for feeling hurt and making it about herself. Now for the update. The first thing I'd say is that Reddit is a pretty amazing place. My inbox was flooded with people offering congratulations and apologies for what happened. And feeling support when you're in a place like that is an awesome thing. To everyone who wrote, thank you. Here's what happened. My relationship had a rough two weeks. It took time for her to see that this was more than just a scratch emotionally. I was disconnected from our everyday life, and it's hard to explain to someone wife who is so sensitive to partial blame accountability that you need them to make a sudden change and handle your issue. That sounds weird to write out, but in my case, marriage, it's true. It's like asking someone to perform disaster relief who hates getting their hands the slightest bit dirty. About a month after the day, I had a trip planned with a bunch of them who had been at the tailgate. I could have brought it up then, could have told them how let down I was and how Reddit was on my side. And in the moment, I just decided, don't ruin the trip. If you tell them how destroyed you felt, they're gonna feel bad and you're on a trip together. If you are reading this and judge me, please know I completely understand. I could have yelled and screamed, or explained how it made me feel. But I thought about how I've known all of them for 20 plus years. And this one thing was just a bad mark against a lot of good memories. It's sad, but I didn't want to ruin the trip we were on. Fast forward to the next year. I didn't continue the league. I got a few texts about it. Are we doing the Pick'em League? And I didn't respond. My wife knew why it was gone. I was happy with not doing it and not needing a weekly reminder. We had the 2023 tailgate almost one year to the date. Someone had won the 2022 season, and of course I planned nothing. Yes, it was the same guy who had won the six years in a row. About three hours into the tailgate, someone made an announcement. They needed everyone to watch the TV because there was a surprise. And my friends had arranged a cameo. They got one of my favorite players of all time to congratulate me on winning the league. It was a year late and it was still great. I watched it, teared up a tiny bit, and my friend leaned over, smiling and sarcastic, and said, can we please start the league up again? I thought of Reddit, the emotions, my wife, etc. I had a few congrats, hugs, and it was over. My dad passed away about six months after the initial Reddit post. When he was in the hospital, 
and I was visiting every day for a few weeks, I started to think about things that matter. The nonsense at my work faded away. My wife, who isn't perfect but is definitely my person, came way more into focus. My relationships with my friends did too. This isn't meant to be life advice, but I feel like emotional landmines are going to happen. I hit one, it hurt, and I was fortunate enough to be with people who felt compelled to fix whatever happened to me. We never hashed it out, and that's okay, I'm all right. I love a bunch of people that have been in my life for a long time, and I'm lucky enough to be moved on from it. Thank you again to everyone who reached out, sent vibes, and was supportive when I was down. Am I the idiot for exposing my brother's secret vasectomy and ruining his life? My brother, Mark Forty, won the lottery when he was 20. It was $1,000 a week for life. He was young and wanted to travel. He dropped out of school and has spent his entire adulthood basically seeing the world. He comes home to visit every few years and we FaceTime with him when he is near a signal. He doesn't travel first class or stay in expensive resorts, so he has actually built up some nice savings. He came home with a girlfriend, Haley, 28 this year. They met when they got stuck in South America during the pandemic. She has been traveling since she graduated from university and she works out of a laptop. I, 54 female, live in the same city where I was born. I love it here. I love being close to my parents and my grandchildren and most of my siblings. Mark hated being the youngest of eight and always swore he would not have kids. Our parents were older when they had him and they didn't have the energy for him, truth be told. Mark came home when he was 30 and told us all that he had had a vasectomy and that he would not be contributing to the world population. Haley is a pretty young thing and she is also intelligent and sweet. I can understand why anyone would fall in love with her. We were having a family barbecue to celebrate Mark being in town. There were maybe 30 people in my parents' yard and house. I was talking to Haley about her future plans now that the world opened up again. She said that she was ready to settle down and start a family. I asked if they were planning on adopting from one of the countries that they had traveled to or if they would try in North America. She said they had talked about it and would be having at least one child of their own. This may be where I messed up. I asked where Mark got his vasectomy reversed or if they were having in vitro fertilization. I know they can harvest sperm from a testicle even after a vasectomy. She went very quiet and went over to Mark. They spoke and they left. Mark called me later that night to scream at me for ruining his life. He hadn't told her, and he was planning on just continuing to travel and maybe adopt if they decided on it. He said I shared private medical information and that he never wanted to see me again. I apologized over and over. I seriously had no way of knowing that he was planning a future with this girl without telling her a pretty big piece of the puzzle might be missing. I feel bad for him, but I think he should have told her. Now for a few important comments. Commenter, not the idiot. Your brother is a self-centered jerk. He was just going to lie and string that poor girl along. Thank you so much for telling her the truth, even if it was an accident. God, what an ad dollars your brother is. Shame on him. Please tell everyone he dates that he has had a vasectomy. He's usually not in the country. When asked how old the girlfriend was when her brother met her, OP said, I think she was 25 when they met. Commander, I mean, did you slip up or did you know you were kicking a wasp's nest? They have been together for almost three years and are planning one biological kid. I assumed it must have come up. So they talked about it and he didn't bring it up on his own terms at all? Wouldn't that have been the time for him to tell his partner about the vasectomy? Now for the one year update. My brother now refuses to visit our parents if I'm around because I accidentally told his girlfriend at the time that he had a vasectomy when she told me that they were trying for kids. So it wasn't that he was planning on reversing his vasectomy or anything. He wanted to do the same as that poor woman's boyfriend, just lead her on until it was too late for her to have kids. He came by this summer with his girlfriend and I stayed away. I guess he told this one that he and I have a bad relationship and that I'm jealous of his riches, lol. After his lottery win, 
I'm not going to do anything about it, but I hope she finds out before he screws her future as well. Sort of a funny thing, though. His lottery money may run out soon. It turns out that he should have paid more attention. The money he won was $1,000 a week for life was actually only for 25 years. He does have savings, so he shouldn't be destitute or anything, but he also does not have a pension or anything. I am interested to see what happens in four years. Commenter, you might have spilled the beans, but it looks like his secret was bound to come out sooner or later anyway. It's cool that you're not trying to get involved, but hoping his girlfriend finds out shows you still care about her. Where are your parents on this? If I knew my sons were this manipulative and deceitful, I'd be disgusted. I'd also be telling every single woman he brings home, which means they'd vanish, I'm sure.